okay yeah um i'm sure we're live um if you're here say hello if you can see me say you can see me all right good evening everybody and welcome to the last day of the international parent conference yay i'm excited i don't know about you i'm really 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 excited um thank you for joining us thank you for um, staying on from the beginning of the conference till now it's been an awesome time i have learned a lot I, I don't know about you but i've learned so much it's been back to back you know from one um, um, um learning to another i want to thank all the coaches that came <laughs> that came on on you know to talk to us I, i'm going to go straight um to my session then i, I can now do the um, conference analysis when i end my session um okay my name is wendy ologi and i am the founder of the intentional parent academy and i'm also the convener of the intentional parent online conference It's an annual online conference that happens every year um last year we had it a little smaller this year we expanded it and then we had 21 coaches in seven days um i'm also the author of the best-selling parenting book i like to call it the bestseller some some of the audience say it's a parenting bible connect to correct um and um, it has it has sold you know uh, in thousands in 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 months just a few months where it was launched i want to share a little history of the intentional parent the intentional parent started last year last year's january and our first annual conference was exactly last year by this time last year and in this one year plus it's been an amazing journey the the aim of um, the intentional parent as a group for me was actually to bring parents to knowledge because one thing i have found that um, has been a, a huge challenge to a whole lot of our parenting system is that we actually struggle because we are not enlightened so enlightenment is actually one key thing that you know I found was that that was a huge challenge. So of course I decided to bridge this gap by creating a forum where people can come on and learn. So the intentional parent is a learning forum, which is one of the reasons why um, when it comes to posts that has to do with things that doesn't have to do with parenting and children, we do not approve them. I want to thank every one member that have you know gotten us here. Um, till this time we're 10,000 plus strong today it's been an amazing journey today I'm going to talk about the discipline that works if you know me you will know that connection parenting is something that I <laughs> I have a passion for I was listening to most of the coaches you know talk during the week and one thing was very certain one thing was very interesting all of them ended up talking about connection I was listening to Taiwa Kinlami this evening, and he said, connection, connection. For your house to be safe, you need to make sure that your house is warm for your children to, it's all about connection. If you've read my book, Connect to Correct, you will know that for me, I say that relationship trumps control when it comes to parenting. I don't care what else it is that, you know, it's out there. The truth is that when you don't connect, you're gonna have issues with whatever you're doing when it comes to parenting a child. And today we're talking about the discipline that works. Is there a discipline that works? Hmm. There is a discipline that works. By the way, that's the title of my, my upcoming book. I, I decided to you know, share um, part of it with you as the book is going to be launched in September. And um, discipline is teaching. Many times when you ask people what is discipline, they say, oh yes, it's punishment. A lot of people end up um, trying to you know, put it in the head of the child that all they need to do is to punish a child for the behavior, you know, the child um, had done. Discipline is teaching. The word discipline actually means to teach. So the goal of discipline, simply put, <laughs> is to teach. If your disciplinary action does not aim to teach, believe you me, that disciplinary action is wrong. Any disciplinary action that humiliates, that embarrasses, that criticizes a person or seem to be unfair to the child does not work. The discipline that works 
teaches your child to make better decisions about their own behavior. So it's not just about decisions. It's not just correcting the behavior and you know telling the child, oh, you've done something wrong and all that. It's actually making the child take responsibility. If your discipline does not make your child take responsibility, then you have failed. The quotes for this beginning, children do not need fixing. They need to be shown how to regulate and set boundaries without breaking them. Most of our disciplinary actions that I've found is that most of them actually break children. You know, Tina Rubina was sharing something, you know, earlier on today. And, you know, she said something. She said, most of the times you said, oh, our parents didn't do anything, but we turned out right. And she said something. She said, did we really turn out right? I like to ask that question to my audience a lot of the times. And she said, yes, turning out right for us means that a child has gone to school, gotten a good job, gone to, you know, become a doctor or something. And she shared the story of a doctor, a professor, who actually rapes, you know, children in school. And, you know, when you ask the family, what they will tell you is that this child turned out right. We need to redefine what turning out right actually means when we're saying, you know, this child turned out right. So, you know, a lot of the things that we are responding to today, according to Irene Bangwell, she said a lot of the things that we're responding to today is the things that the mistakes, the errors <laughs> that were done in the past. That's one of the things that we're responding to today. Earlier on this week, I was with a friend. Uh, my friend has one bad leg, you know. <laughs> he should be here as well. And, um, you know, uh, we met, we've been friends since um, primary school. And we, we got talking about parenting, of course. <laughs> That's one thing that you, you find me talking about, you know, for every time, you know, you meet me. <laughs> I'm passionate about it. I'm passionate about discipline. So, you know, we were talking, and one of the things um, he said was that the truth is our parents assumed so much. It is one thing that I have said. Please open up your mind for this class. I'm going to say a lot of the thing, a lot of things that you might not want to agree with me. <laughs> now I want to tell the line of Dima Obi. Some things I might say to you this evening might not look like it, but believe you me, when you think about it, is 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 um, um taught leadership. When you think about it really, you will begin to you know put you know something in place on some of the narratives that we have. Many times we only think of making a child obey us. Is the aim of discipline about obedience? I was speaking with um, my boss, my mentor, Tawa Kinlami, and you know we were talking about someone, a boy that was taking that, that said he wasn't going to go to boarding house because apparently the boy had been you know being molested. They were trying to sodomize him in the boarding house and. The parents were more interested in the child obeying them than actually finding out why that child has refused to go to that place. All right? So a lot of the times, we are centered on the child obeying us. Is it really just about obedience? Or is it about doing what is right? Discipline is not just about obedience. We must take that down. It's about taking responsibility. And if the child, the child had gone to school, and when he met um, uh, my mentor, you know, the child was saying, see, I was, I was going to be sodomized in that place. I was trying to tell my parents, they were not listening. That's why I said I wasn't going back to the school. And, you know, it, 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 was, it was funny. And when they, the child said, this thing that they are doing there goes against everything that my parents have taught me that was right. So at that point, what was more important? Obedience? or doing what is right <laughs> obedience is not just you know being obedient in quotes that's not what discipline is about if you demand blind obedience from your children you might be hindering them from learning how to act responsibly to the demands of the situation let me repeat that somebody should write it for me if you demand blind obedience from your children you might be hindering them from learning how to act responsibly to the demands of the of demands and to the demands of the situation. So when you say obedience, is your obedience blind? <laughs> it's your obedience blind. Obedience is not just 
telling your child, no, no, you must just obey. All right? Uh, discipline is not just telling your child, you must just obey. Discipline is actually telling your child to take responsibility. Discipline is not shouting on someone. <laughs> I know parents are going to do a lot of fight on this one. Discipline is not shouting on someone. Discipline is not hitting someone. Let me explain. I know that when I started my courses last year, becoming the emotionally intelligent parent, one of the things that I told them in that class was that you can do this without actually being violent. You know, we, 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 we take discipline as violence. Discipline has nothing to do with violence. We must understand that. Discipline is the ability to make our children to take responsibility. I will share an, an interesting you know, perspective with you. Our foster daughter is an adult. And um, so one of those days, um, she had this friend that comes to the house. And then, you know, got, we didn't like, in quote, <laughs> who the person was. But, you know, what many of the parents do is that you're going to force your child and say, no, this person. And then you put it, you know, in mandates and all that. Let me, let me tell you what happened. You know, this, I discussed with my husband a lot of the times, and then we kept talking about it. We were looking for a way to find, you know, what is right, to find the right thing to say at that time point in time. Remember, you cannot parent a toddler the same way you parent a preteen or the same way you parent a teen and an adult. They are different, you know, things. You must begin to understand responsibility shift. I'll come to that later. And, you know, it took, um, and, he, and then my husband and, um, and um, our foster daughter was coming back from work. And he told her a story, a very funny story of, you know, friendship, <laughs> of how people can actually drag you down. He didn't need to say more than that. She came back and she came to me and said, see what daddy said. I smiled. I have already heard the story on the phone because, you know, my husband called me and told me what it was. And then she now said, do you know I understood what he said? But I told him I didn't understand it. <laughs> These children understand when you use storytelling to also, you know, form part of your discipline. That's, by the way, we'll get that. What is discipline not? Now, we're talking about the discipline that works. What is the discipline that does not work? Discipline is not a reward system. Rewards don't really change behaviors, yes? They change the whys and the way children accomplish a task. Discipline is not a reward system. If, you, if your child has done something wrong and you're, you're putting in place disciplinary strategies, rewarding the child is just going to, you know, <laughs> rewarding the child is just going to put, you know, change the perspective of the child, the whys and the, the ways the child actually accomplishes a task. All right? The truth is that these children are smart. They will learn how to strike bigger deals with you. <laughs> you know, they, 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 they will become wrong. They know they are wrong, and they will learn how to strike bigger deals. And, you know, they, they will now, discipline now becomes, you know, a, a thing to, to play with. I said earlier that discipline is not shouting. That's number two. And that situation that I shared with us, my husband, we could have just, you know, decided that, oh, okay, so our first daughter was doing what is wrong, then we are going to just hamper on her. Bim, 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 bim. Will you stop? That friend must not come there. If you do that, the truth is that an adult will actually, you know, change tact and you will not know what is happening. So discipline is not shouting. Discipline is not a reward system. Discipline is not being permissive. <laughs> permissive. Irene Bangwe was sharing about guilt fueled free parenting. What I see these days is that Parents are on two extremes. You have the parents who are, what all they are doing is they are screaming, they are, you know, when a child is they want to kill the child, they want to. Then you have the other set of parents who just do nothing when a child does something. So, you know, uh, uh, people say, oh, you don't hit children, you don't hit your children. What do you do exactly? I smile. There are discipline strategies. They are so key that you, you know exactly what to do and when. And no one discipline strategy is actually, you know, you can't say this is the only thing I'm going to use. You must be able to use everything. So discipline is not being permissive. Being permissive always, mostly happens when we begin to do the guilt-free parenting. All right? 
the guilt-free parenting. You know, we need to get to the point where we're doing guilt-free. You know, what we're doing is guilt parenting. Oh, I haven't been around for two weeks. Oh, we are all tempted to do it. Believe you me. If you're not intentional, you find yourself doing it. I am busy myself. My husband is also very busy, if you know us personally. But, you know, we, we are also very careful at what exactly we do. And we dish out to these children, you know, at you know, every point in time. Because you have missed a part. You just come. You want to be able to, you know, put in something that actually will work. Or something that will just compensate. That's, that's the problem. When the child does something wrong, you, you try to compensate. Discipline is not being permissive. Discipline is not shouting. Discipline is not a reward system. If you rely on rewards to teach your children, <laughs> yeah, means you, 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 you deny them the opportunity to actually act from the internal source of motivation and strength. So, you know, it's about acting from the motivational source of, mot you know, be being able to go internally and think about a thing before you do them. Many of us are stuck in what we don't find fulfilling because, of course, unconsciously, we just learn to do things because there's a reward or because there's something, as opposed to fulfillment, accomplishment, and satisfaction. Let me not go into that. All right. So what does it mean for your discipline to work? Now, we've been talking about what discipline is not. Now, the question is, what is discipline? What, does it, what do you need? Number one, very important, a relationship with your child. A relationship with your child. You cannot give rules without relationship. If you do that, you are striking a thing for rebellion. So what you're doing is that you're going to make children rebel because there's really no relationship. I say always, and it's also a quote in my book, connection trumps control in parenting. You must understand that. Correction, trump, and connection trumps control in parenting. In my book, Connect to Correct, I shared on how connecting with your child can actually make disciplinary tools effective. Just because you have a connection. If you don't have a healthy relationship with your child, discipline isn't likely going to work. You know, your child will be more motivated to listen to you when you have a relationship with them. A child you do not have a relationship with my not listen to you. Why do you think that people connect with some set of people and do connect? I think Mome was talking about connection. I also remember um, Corina talked about connection. I also remember our first speaker, our very first speaker um, uh, who opened the session. She also talked about connection. All right? So I often say that lasting authority is respect and trust, not power and control. You need to put that down. Lasting authority is respect and trust, not power and control. The truth is, if your child cannot confide in you, you have lost authority. Quote me. If your child cannot confide in you, your child is probably talking to someone else in somewhere. <clears throat> Connection. If your child cannot confide in you, that means your child is, you know, talking to someone else and you have lost authority. Unfortunately, we, we think that authority is all about, you know, forcing control. No, authority is respect and trust. Can your child trust you enough to come and bring you issues in the most difficult times? That's what is important. So when children make mistakes, see all these things. Doesn't mean nobody is raising a perfect child. Your 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 aim is never to raise a perfect person. Your aim is to be able to put, you know, your children and show them what to do when it comes to taking the right decisions. Do you know that sometimes actually, you know, you might actually see yourself giving rules that are not right. <laughs> That's where obedience <laughs> and doing what is right. We need to be able to actually differentiate this thing. All right. So let's go. Um, you need to see discipline as a tool for teaching. You need to see discipline as a tool for teaching. So if your discipline must work, then you must see it as a tool for teaching. Discipline is a tool for teaching. Discipline is not a tool for you to, you know, break people. That's what discipline about is about. 
See, a lot of us, I know, come from places where, you know, these things were tough. These things were not right. But let me tell you, the fact that your parents did not do it right is no longer an excuse. There's so much knowledge out there. Today, my pastor was saying in church <laughs> that the, one of the problems that we have is lack of enlightenment. And honestly, that's the truth. Recently, I was in school, my children's school, and one of the parents met me and said, ah, your daughter is always reading. My daughter never reads anything. She prefers to watch TV. I smiled. And I said to her, she said, and I hear that your children don't watch TV during the week. How are you able to do that? Because I know you're busy. You're not always around. How do you do that? I said to her, the truth is, discipline is a tool of teaching. I've been able to tell them that watching TV during the week, this is what it can do for them. And I also, also allowed them to experiment with it. And my son would tell me, I lost too much time. I don't think it's a good idea. You know, you, you need to be able to involve your children in your, you know, in your day-to-day -day work. You need to be able to involve them to be able to teach them. And, you know, while I was talking with this woman, and she said to me, she said, no, I've beaten her. I'm always beating her whenever she watches TV. Beating your child for doing that thing that is wrong. Unfortunately, we beat and we continue to beat. I learned the hard way. <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you read my book, Connect to Correct, you see, I shared my story. I learned the hard way. So don't think I, I, I just got here. No. I, I began to actually consciously read. When I began to talk, talk to the woman, and I, I said something about buying books, removing TV, doing this, she now said, so how much? <laughs> she said, how much do you buy these books that you buy for your daughter? I told her that, well, Farida is here. Farida, <laughs> I told her, I told her that one of those books actually would cost me 3,000 naira. I spent 10,000 to buy you know, part of the series. I'm going to spend more to be able to get more of the series. I'm going to get them from Farida. That's, in fact, I had to ask Farida, please, where are the series, the ones that you have, dog diaries? I need to buy the remaining. My daughter loved them. She reads them a lot. You know the truth. I decided, it's a decision, that instead of, it's not that clothes are not okay to buy. Believe you me, it's okay to buy your children clothes. It's okay to do everything. But you must begin to pay emphasis on what you want. You must begin to also begin to program your home. The other day I shared a post about programming. Parenting is about programming. Whatever you put in place, that's what happens. That's what is you know, it's put together. Recently, I called the carpenter in the house. I needed to do another shelf somewhere around the corner in the house. And, you know, he was laughing because I, my books are beginning to pile up again. So the truth of the matter is that what you want to see, you begin to teach it. You begin to program it around your home. Discipline must be consistent. That's the second one. See, eh, when a child does something today and you hit the child, according to you, or you tell the child, go to the thinking corner, Ah, that was the one that um, um, I had from Bookies. Go to the thinking corner. I don't even use both naughty corner anymore and thinking corner, whatever that is. All right? So go to the thinking corner. Go wherever. Then tomorrow, he beat the, the, the sister again. He said, ah, no, don't worry. Don't do it again. You are becoming inconsistent. You're confusing, you know, the person. All right? Somebody's asking what's the title of the series. Oh, oh it's Dog Diaries. That's the title. You're confusing um, um, the child, you know, with whatever this marine action that you must, you know, have. So discipline must be consistent. Discipline must be immediate. If you're going to, okay, so what I mean immediate, I don't mean, oh, once a child does something, you just, you know, put your legs and up and just throw yourself and all that. Sometimes, actually, when I mean immediate, you must decide, make a decision that there's a consequence for whatever it is that the child has done at that time, not later. You can carry out whatever decision you have made later. Let me share an example. Sometimes the children actually do some things and, you know, we just keep quiet for a while because we are thinking of the best strategy to tackle that problem. When you move in without thinking, I say parenting is about thinking. If you must parent in this century, you must be a thinker. You, because these children are smart. <laughs> Tima said the other day that they are, they are, they, all they want to do is to outsmart you. So you must look at that. You must think it. That these children are smart for everything you're doing you're going to be going around there and be saying okay what do i do what do i do another thing that discipline must be is that discipline must be fair hmm. your discipline must be fair you must not be found unfair for your child by your child what i say is be fair and femme be fair be femme and um 
be, be fair, be firm, and be kind. It's important. FFK. Be fair, be firm, and be kind in your discipline. So you must understand that you must be fair, you must be firm, and you must be kind. How do you determine the best way to discipline a child? How do you determine the best way to discipline a child? There are too many things. There are too many things that you can do. One of the things is that you must be mindful of prejudice. <laughs> prejudice. This thing is something that I have found on this journey. In this, my work, eh? That's what thing I have found that have been a problem. All right? Our parents did it. After all, we did it. We turned out well. Like I said earlier, we must begin to redefine what this turned out well is. Really. What is the person turned out well? Somebody is... Is, is a is a nurse somebody is is, is a, a woman molester somebody just because he has a good job and 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 you know had seeming success then we say this person turned out well the person didn't turn out well please so be mindful of prejudice that fact that your parents did discipline negatively is never an excuse to do the same parents read learn getting here is not magic that's the truth it's very very important that we read we learn read 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 and read and read 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 to learn the truth of the matter is you might not be able to take everything you read and just you know put it and implement it but you know the truth reading actually pushes you to talk you know it makes you to think it makes you to think all right so the fact that your parents approach this really negatively is never an excuse like I said, you need to be able to understand what is the discipline that works and how does it work. The truth is, parenting characteristics are reflective. So the risk of not dealing with this prejudice is that you continue the circle. What do I mean? If you lived in a home where your parents are always yelling, eating, the tendency that that is also going to reflect in your own journey as a parent is actually very high. So... You need to be able to actually sit back. One of the things that we do in our coaching classes, for those of you who have um, um, been through my coaching classes, I've had you know almost 100 parents go through that course. I say review how we were parented. You know, review how we were. We need to go back. See, until you review how you were parented, a lot will continue to happen. I have to sit back myself and say, what are the takeaways? What are the things that, you know, were right, were wrong? See, when, when we bring this, oh, no, oh, no, no, our parents did the best job. I, it, it's not, this is not to say that our parents didn't do a good job, but it is to say that there's a better way, all right? Interestingly, my parents in law are on this group. My mom is here. I'm sure she's listening as well. So, and she agrees with me that a lot of the things that happened in their generation was out of so much assumption. Nobody was really you know, ready to learn, you know, what it actually means to parent. Parenting is about knowledge. Don't, don't, don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. All right? So there is no single right way to discipline a child. So you can't say, once this child is wrong, I am going to just beat the child and that will be it. No. There's no single right way. That's why I said you need to learn, you need to read. You need to, you, you become a student of your child. You become that person who is looking at your child and saying, this is how my child is, what is peculiar, from what I have read, what is peculiar to this child, all right? So there's no single right way. There might be ways, all right? But there is no single right way. Find what works for your home. What disciplinary strategy do you have? When I talk to parents, I ask, what disciplinary strategy do you have? They look at me like I'm lost. Have you and your spouse sat down and said, this is the kind of discipline that we need to take on. Or you're just saying as a thing, just as a thing, just you know, as the spirit leads. Once anything happens, boom, you're just up screaming, jumping, and all that, all that. At some point, we decided to use a lot of storytelling. We found out that this, this storytelling made a lot of difference in our strategy. In fact, we use it a lot till tomorrow. My husband and I. All right, we tell a lot of stories when things go wrong, and then you know, you see the children come back to actually be, realize that okay, this is what we should have done. Find out what works for your home, but you must consider the following when you're doing that. Find out what works for your home, you must consider the following when you're doing that. Your child's temperament, you need to consider the kind of temperament your child have, 
the abilities, the weaknesses, personality, they must be taken into consideration for you to actually bring out what works. What works for child A might not work for child B. The truth is, if you do the same thing, I have a set of twins. So let me even tell you, you know, very interesting thing. The way we, we, we discipline Ayo <laughs> is not the same way we defer. Because we've come to understand that do, they do not have the same personality. It's interesting. Let me tell you one of the errors that our parents made. Our parents raised every, raised every, most of our parents raised every single child the same way. Every single child the same way. So you find out that you come to a family, there are five children, four are doing very well. One person is, is trained, two people are trained, or one other person doesn't know what they are doing. Another person, you know, uh, I've, I've started doing something that you don't understand. Why? Because every child is not the same. Every child is not the same, but we're using the same thing, you know, the same kind of training for every child. So you must understand that your child's temperament. Don't say, oh, because um, this person did like this. That's why this person must be like, it does not work. Another thing that you must take into consideration is your own temper temperament. <laughs> you must take into account your own temperament. I say often that parenting is about you. That's my favorite quote in my book, Connect to Correct. Parenting is about you, not the child. Parenting is about you, not the child. Sometimes I, in fact, I do some things and I'm upset with what, you know, maybe our foster daughter have done or maybe the, the twins or something. And my husband will just turn and say, parenting is about you. That's your quote. You know, I smile again and I say, oh my goodness, this thing is, is, is not, it's not easy. If you put some of these things in mind, and remember that parenting is about you, then you will understand that taking your own temperament into consideration when you are creating your own disciplining strategy is key. You need to think about your partner's temperament as well. You need to think about your, person, your, your partner's temperament. The truth is, if you don't work on your emotions, these disciplining measures will not work. What me? Your emotions are a killer to the disciplining measures that does not, you know, have to bring the child down, you know, kill the child's self-esteem. You need to be able to work on you. For me, I'm about parents because I believe that if you can work on yourself, then this journey will be easier. I have been there. I have realized that <laughs> this journey is actually about me. It's not just about the children. I am the parent, so I have the responsibility to actually do what is right. Another thing is that you need to identify your parenting style. Authoritarian, authoritative, uninvolved, permissive. You know, it's been proven that uh, parents who are um, authoritarian, authoritative are actually the parents who, you know, end up having to be able to, you know, um, um, raise children who are more um, disciplined and all that and all that. But what I say is, whichever end you are, take, you know, what's is important and refine your parenting style. This is not about saying, oh, all of you just get into you know, a particular kind of parenting style. You need to be able to know what works, look at what is involved, and then begin to refine. For, uh, for me, the parenting style I use, I don't think is even written in anywhere. All right? It's not written anywhere. So you need to be able to create your own thing. And the truth is that if you don't read, you can't create these things. You need to read. Learn about the types of discipline. You need to learn what type of big discipline there is. I'm expanding this so much in my book that is coming out in September. I'm expanding on types of discipline, positive discipline, gentle discipline, boundary-based, behavior modification, emotional, emotion coaching. You know, most times you can't use one part. You can't use one part or one type of discipline to discipline your child. Most times, you actually need a combination of most of it. So you need to be able to understand what is this, what is that, how do I combine it to work for me? Experiment with several disciplinary strategies. You need to be able to experiment with several disciplinary strategies to know what works. Parenting is in phases. I call it responsibility shift. Parenting is in phases. You need to understand what works for each child. What works for each child is in phases and then at what age do you need to do what <laughs> the truth of the matter is there are some things that we don't bother doing with our adult child we just we just don't bother anymore sometimes just some things just happens and you know you just look at it and just 
you know, walk away. Yesterday, I, I called, you know, our foster daughter into the room and I said, my bathroom, what happened to it? I think I really don't like, you know, the way it's looking. She just went on, did one long grab. No, I watched it. Eh, 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 please, eh, I'm tired. Eh, eh. I just, I kept quiet. In fact, even me, I felt like, uh-uh, what's happening? You know what? I've been able to get here because I've been able to work on myself. That's the truth. Believe you me, <laughs> if it were to be when I really didn't understand what is needed per time, I will be demanding instant and blind obedience. You must, you must take note of these things. I will be demanding instant and blind obedience. That's not what is required. At that point, she has made her point. She, she wasn't going to, you know, take responsibility. I let her be. Later on, she now said, oh, okay, maybe I'll come and check it again. But I think, I don't think anything you do is going to change anything. Really? All right? So, let me get, get back to, our uh, time is running very fast. All right? So, um, I, like I said, parenting is in phases. I call it responsibility shift. Your child disciplining measure needs to also change from time to time. You know, this is why you must have a toolbox. Your toolbox must be filled. Your toolbox must be filled. All right? So you must become a thinking parent. You need to think about strategies at every point in time. Make your rules clear and stay consistent. Make your rules clear and stay consistent. In our last coaching session, I told the parent who asked me a question, I said, oh, every time I'm telling my children I'll beat you, but I end up not really beating them. Any threats you can't carry out when it comes to discipline a child, do not say it. I want someone to help me write that. Any threat you cannot carry out when you're talking about discipline a child, do not bother with it. If you must say it, then you must be able to actually carry it out. Don't say what you can do. So you must also continue to teach new skills to your child so that they can learn to manage your manage you know these behaviors better. You need to teach skills. You know, um, when I when I heard um, Terry on the first we talk about teachable moment, I was like, oh my goodness, those my my words. If you follow my post, you will know that I talk about teachable moment. I use anything and anything to teach. I use anything that you know. It's 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 interesting. Anything. Sometimes we are watching something. I teach with it. You must be involved. I teach with anything. I teach with going to, going to the market. I teach with talking. I teach with them. I just, you know, key into any opportunity that comes, you know, with the children to be able to teach. There are so many tools for discipline. I'm going to just read them. Time might not permit me to be able to say this one, that one, that one. There are many tools, really. I'm going to share um, about five, all right? Verbal correction. Verbal correction. When you're telling the child, no, don't do this, this is why, this is why, and this is why. Verbal correction. All right, verbal correction is a tool. Emotion coaching is another tool. Emotion coaching is another tool. See, a child who cannot um, put his emotions together will continue to misbehave. A child who cannot put their emotions together will continue to misbehave. So teaching your child emotions, how to control their emotions, is actually key when it comes to discipline. I talk about controlling your emotions as a parent. For me, when you come to me, you know, when you come to me and say, oh, I want to, you know, to, 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 to have a, a personal coaching moment with you, I tell you that you need to go through my emotional intelligence class. There are a lot of parents who have gone through it. Once you come to me, I'll tell you that that's because I've realized that most of the times that when you begin to, you know, teach people the discipline that works or teach people what to do and they have not even been able to work on themselves, it fails. I've tried it before and it failed. And I realized that the truth is you must work on you. You must work on you. All right, so emotions coaching, you can't coach someone. You can't give what you don't have, so don't bother. You can't, I have been there. I have been in a place where I didn't even know how to manage my own emotions, all right? My own emotions. So I needed to work on my emotions 
to be able to teach the child those emotions. And today I'm able to say, oh yes, this is this this is it, this is it. Because I've been able to manage my own emotions. I have emotional triggers. Do you know what your triggers are? I, I know my triggers. Sometimes I, I create a, a, a space where my triggers will not be in, you know, <laughs> will not be questioned. You know, sometimes my even my children know what my triggers are when it comes to, you know, working on working working my emotions. But you must understand who you are emotionally. Unfortunately, we were not taught. So when you tell me that our parenting was, oh, we were parented in one fabulous way, believe you me, the truth is a lot went wrong. A lot that we need to correct ourselves before we move on to parenting another person. You can't raise people broken. Intentional parents hear me. You cannot raise people broken. You will need to fix you before you fix the child. The child does not even need to be fixed. You can't raise people broken. So if you know that there have been, you know, stuff coming from where you're coming from, please deal with you before you raise another. Deal with you before you raise another. Another thing that you must also, you can do when it comes to tools is setting boundaries and restrictions. But I say that you cannot set, set boundaries and restrictions without teaching. In fact, usually I say that if you discipline a child without teaching a child, you are you are you are actually committing anger. Why why will you teach? Why will you discipline someone that you know you haven't taught anything? Sometime last year, I was telling my son that he he didn't um, um, do something um, well, sweep some somewhere well, and then I was like, I said that you don't know how to sweep this place, and he said to me, Mom, actually, you haven't really taught me. That struck me. You know, most times we just say, oh, yes, children learn by sin. But at the same time, you must intentionally teach. You must intentionally teach. Let me tell you why intentional teaching is key. The child might make mistakes, you know, just by watching and then doing it the way and then, you know, trying out things. Let me share a very vivid example. Sometime two weeks, two weeks ago, our son had been watching, <laughs> my husband likes to iron a lot. <laughs> our son had been watching my husband, even when the laundry person irons and then, because my, my husband actually brings clothes and begins to iron. And then, you know, my son had been watching my husband iron, watching him, watching him. One day, he went um, some, uh, to the ironing place and brought out the iron. I was ironing his singlet. Nobody knew. He came out with that iron singlet and came to me very excited. Mommy! I can now iron. <laughs> you know, as much as that was interesting and exciting. And then, you know, I told my husband. My husband said, okay. He has started experimenting with it. It is time for me to teach him intentionally how to iron. For instance, if a child starts beginning to experiment with car, it's not the right age. You tell the child, you need to wait. This is why. Teach the child why. If not, the child will experiment with those things that they are watching, and then they will get it all wrong. Teach why. Teach why. Tell your children why. When you're setting boundaries and restrictions, tell them why. I say that TVs are not watched in my home during the week. I have shared why with them. My children stay home when they come back. Even when they are alone, they don't put on the TV. Not because I'm there to kill them. Parents, if your child cannot obey or cannot be responsible enough even when you're not there, then your disciplinary action is failing. You need to get it right. It's failing. So you need to be able to look back and say, okay, this thing that I'm telling my children over and again, why are they not doing it? You, you need to be able to get to that point. I got to that point where, you know, I'm asking, okay, so watching TV is not for my own good. I had to teach, teach the children, sit them down, and say, this is why. Let's also experiment and, and see why... <laughs> this is not okay they failed and they came back and said really you lose time you don't have time again to do this to do that to do that and on their own believe you me these children you know were able to say okay we agree with this strategy that you're putting up for us you need to be able to teach before you set boundaries and restrictions tell them why See, this generation is a white generation. This generation is not the generation of, I tell you, you must do it and you do it. Have you not noticed 
When you say, go and do this, your children will say, why? <laughs> they will ask you why. They will ask you why. So is that why that you need to actually begin to explain? You must say, this is why this is done. This is why this is not done. This our commands hopping up and down and all that. The truth is, most of them, it didn't it really work. <laughs> like I say, like I'm saying again, this, we turned out right. What does it really mean when we say we turned out right? All right so you know you must also be able to involve the children in setting these boundaries and restrictions let them understand these boundaries and restrictions why and how you know these boundaries and restrictions you know are there yesterday i was taking my daughter out we had a even though i've been doing the conference i've been a lot of my attention has been on the conference and she said so but you have a, a small time we were coming from the salon can you just do our outing i took her out on our way there I, one of the things i teach my children is to take responsibility on our way there, I just realized that a lot of um, there were a lot of traffic, and I said, "Should we turn back so that maybe tomorrow or Monday or sometime we will repeat the you know the outing?" Please, it was just a a girl's outing, according to my daughter. It's a girl's time out, all right. So, and and on our way, she now I could see her face. She's you know squeezed her face like, "Oh no, she's at it again." I didn't say any other thing. I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't push it. I continued to go. We got stuck in traffic. You know, she began to say, ah, we are stuck in traffic. We're not reaching there. When I parked my car, I told her, I said, this is the, one of the reasons why I wanted you to take this responsibility with me. And, you know, review what this is about. It's not really about me. It's also about you seeing things from your own point of view. I really needed you to do that. She now said, oh, that's true, mom. I didn't know it was going to be this stressful. I'm really sorry. Next time, I, I think I will think it through again. So teach your children to think. Forget this, our, you know, this thing. Teach, set, let them say your certain boundaries. Let them, yes, you know, involve them. Another thing is let them, consequences is another tool for discipline. There's a consequence for doing whatever. My children know that there's a consequence for whatever it is. If there is this. You know, some of them are logical consequences. Some of them are, uh, uh, um, some of them are what are the natural consequences. They just come to you. For instance, I'm telling you to eat because we made a meal, and you're telling me, oh, I, I don't really like that food. Oh, it's fine. It's okay. You can sleep hungry. It's fine. Uh, I'm not forcing you. I'm not going to say. I'm not. I'm not going to shout either or jump up and down. It's your choice. You make a choice. All right. Sometimes the children come to me and say, "Oh, okay. So can we make this? Okay. So my children can cook. They're nine, and uh, you know. So so sometimes they decide that, oh, okay. Can we do this? Can we do that? And I'm like, you must be able to, you know, um, understand that nobody. <laughs> there's a there's a common saying in my home. We don't have slaves here. There are no slaves here. Everybody is held at the same standard. Like Arimbangwa said yesterday, everyone is held at the same standard. Another thing that you can use as a disciplinary tool is silence. But you know the truth. You cannot use silence and suggestions when you have not been able to actually bring your children to the point that they need to think. So you must have put in something. Sometimes my children do something and I keep quiet. When I do, they understand that that is a workable tool. I don't need to say more than that. All I say is, I just look at you and I'm quiet. When I'm quiet like that, you also understand that, okay, no, we've crossed boundary. Okay, we need to review this. Most of the times when I'm quiet, my, my children actually come back and say, so mom, what exactly, uh, what, what, what was wrong? Can you share or something? So silence can actually be a tool. But silence can only be a tool <laughs> when you are the teaching parent, when you are the thinking parent, when you are the parent that has involved your children, and when you're the parent that has been able to work your emotions. Another tool is storytelling. I've shared, I, I, have, I have like, I'm expanding like, I have like 10, 10 tools that you can use. <laughs> storytelling, I've shared about storytelling earlier on. Storytelling is important, is key. Sometimes when things happen and you, you know, attack a child, the child withdraws from you. Let me share a vivid example with you. Our son, you know, was playing a game that we had said, oh no, he couldn't play. And, you know, when we realized what was happening, we just, you know, were calm, and we thought of what exactly we could do. My husband brought them, 
you know, started to tell the story. He didn't go halfway. He didn't go halfway with the story. And everywhere was sober. Everywhere. Everybody was sober. They, they were thinking. They were, you know, you know, at the time, self, our daughter was like, why did you have to do that? Why did you, why did you have to do that? You, you didn't have to, I've told you. So it was, it was, it was some sort of, you know, using storytelling to pass a message of what can happen when you don't listen or when you don't agree, you know, to be supervised. So it, it went, we didn't have to talk about it again. Do you know that when we were done with that session with them, my son came to me and said, See, please, mom, I want you to delete that game. I wanted to delete that game. I smiled. You know the truth. I could have brought down, you know, my system. I said, oh, you're playing this game. I didn't want you to play this game. It's violent. Bim, 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 bim. I just remove it. Bam, 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 bam. I remove it. The child can go hide somewhere, go in school, and go and look for the game on some other person, I, whatever. But you know the truth. The child might end up becoming hypocritical. Right? So, verbal correction tool has a tact it's not just i'm going to just expand on verbal correction it has a tact it's not just lecturing or trying to you know prove to your child that you were better when you were you know growing up you must be intentional with verbal correction so i'm going to just share on verbal correction and then we move we move on to start winding down to allow questions to come in it's not lecturing it's a tact he's not trying to prove to your child that you are better it must be intentional. You need to validate and accept, you know, the relationship. Tell your child, yes, you know I love you, and you know that this is why this. And then tell your child your concern. You know that this thing that you have done, these are my views on it, and you have continued to do it. Remind your child of their previous behavior. You can tell them things that this is very unlike you. What exactly has happened? Then separate your child from the behavior. A lot of people who have spoken have spoken about separating your child from the behavior. Let your child understand. Let you know understand that when I'm talking about the behavior, I'm not talking about you. You know, and then react appropriately to the size of the challenge. Don't don't use a hammer to kill an ant. It's not necessary. A child does something that you're supposed to, you know, give consequences that is um, commensurate. You're bringing one big over bloated something, and then the child, of course, the child becomes. You know, angry and upset. All right? Don't ask why. <laughs> when you're using verbal correction, parents, don't ask why. When you ask why, you will get an answer. <laughs> you will get an answer. You're going to get an answer that is an excuse. Or you get an answer of, or you get a, a silence. At that point in time, it, it, it breaks as in you begin to, you know, you actually begin to have power tussle with the child. Because you're not saying, is it not you I'm asking? Is it not you I'm asking why did you do it? You now become, it becomes power tussle. See, anytime you need to validate your authority, there's something wrong with it. <laughs> My husband is a marriage coach. He says something. He said, for every time a man needs to say, I am a man, I am a man, then there's a problem with it. There's a problem with your manhood in that house. So every time you, you, you have a need to say, don't you know I'm your parent? There's a problem. Think again. It's part of something. You don't need to get there. <laughs> so anytime you get to the point where you need to begin to fight, it's because you're asking why when you don't need to. You are trying to prove a point. Don't prove any point. It's not a time to prove it. You can find out why later, but that's not the time. So when we tell you what happens when you ask your strong-willed child why? <laughs> they come up with an excuse or they will, they will, they will actually, you know, begin to uh, play dumb. You, you start struggling with the child. You start struggling and it's a problem. Don't, you don't want to get to a point where you're struggling with the child. Is it not you I'm talking to? Is it not you I'm, I'm going to do? Is it not you I'm, I'm, I'm doing? Is it not you, you start... You start fighting. <laughs> and then you're, you're not trying to validate your parenthood. You don't need to. And then you're not trying to say, don't you know I'm your parent? At that point, you have lost authority. You have lost authority. The child knows. All the, don't you know I'm your parent? Don't you know I'm talking to you? You're not listening to me? It's not necessary. Believe you me. 
An upset child is not a good listener. So you, you must also understand that. A child who has done something wrong. And you know the truth. For a child, negative behavior is better than no... Uh, um, but negative attention is better than no attention at all. So if your child is misbehaving, I shared a lot of that in Connect to Correct. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, it's, it's going to take a lot of our time. You know, I, I shared on why your child can actually be misbehaving. All right? Why your child can actually be misbehaving. So you, you might want to get, you know, a copy of Connect to Correct and, and read a lot about connecting with your child to be able to discipline your child. Let me share what I call the four R's of negative discipline. This is where I'm going to begin to conclude. The four R's of negative discipline. The four R's of negative discipline is when you do negative discipline that does not, that, that does not work. <laughs> now, the discipline that works and the discipline that does not work. You're going to get four R's. It's either the child rebels, the child revenge, the child resent, or the child will retreat. The child will rebel. Rebellion. Negative discipline can cause your child to rebel. I share a story as I wind up. Few years ago, there was a son in this nation and a pastor of the Redeemed Christian Church of God that was murdered by his own son. What happened? Power tussle. Don't you know I'm your parent? Don't you know who I am? Discipline that does not work. The child refuses to say amen because you're praying. And then you slap the child because you, you want to prove that you are the parent. The child gets upset. This is a child that you've been beating you know, from small. How come the child is, is not good till now? You know, so when we say this, this you know, beating thing, it, it hits me in a very wrong way. Like I said, what I'm going to say to you, what I've said to you today might not be something that um, you want to accept easily. It took me time to, to get here. So it's okay, it's fine. If you don't understand it, it's fine. You can come to me later and then we begin to you know talk about it the child rebels the child took a knife and actually cut hit his his dad this child was in third year in the university hit his child and the child and the dad and the dad died he's a son he was a son in nigeria google the story you will search the guy died the child looked around and didn't know what exactly you know to do the child butchered him in pieces put him in a box and on his way to go and throw him away, that's when he was actually seen to have, you know, done something wrong. He had murdered his own father. Meanwhile, this child was beaten. This child was hit. This child was done all the things. Negative discipline. This child rebelled. Rebellion is, rebellion, the rules with that relationship is a no. It's a no. All right? I talked about rebellion. Revenge. You find so many, so many parents today, all they are saying is, that my father, what that my father did to me, I'm never going to forgive him. If I have an opportunity, I will deal with him. I've, I've heard parents, I'm sure you will be shocked. I hear a lot. I hear so much every day. Every day. So people from all walks of life. Recently, and then another thing that can happen is be resenting that, that person or that parent. Two days ago, a boy shared with me, a man, not a boy. He's almost 60. He was in my office two days ago. And we're talking about, you know, parenting. And he said something to me. He said, I hate my mother. Ha -ha. I said, why? That's so, that's, that's too much. He said, the truth of the matter is that my mom was a stupid woman. I said, ha -ha. that bad? He said, she's even late. Let's not talk about it. I said, what exactly happened? He was, you know, gracious enough to share with me. And he actually gave me permission to share this today. He said he was being sexually molested in their home by the mom's two sisters. <laughs> See, a pedophile can be anybody. It doesn't matter who. So, he was being sexually molested by the mom's sisters. And the first one molested him for two years. The mom didn't know. And after two years, that one left. The other one came. And the other one began to also molest him. He said he was molesting him to the point that any day he does not have erection, that the girl will beat him blue black. I, I don't know how that... And she, he said he was so abused as a child that he made a mess of him. That today he's divorced. That where he's coming from is a mess. Let me tell you why he said he hated his mom. 
So one of those days, a mom had come back and walked in on them and saw that actually this child was being molested. The, the sister was actually sleeping, was you know, sleeping with him. He said he was eight and this sister was 18. And the mom beat him blue black and did not say a word to the sister. And after that time, the sister still continued to stay in the house. Eventually, her fa his father found out what happened, beat the mother blue black, <laughs> and chased the girl, you know, away. But he said, that thing never left me. And he said, growing up, my mom found every reason to hit me. Every reason to hit me. And he said to me, he said, when people say we turned out right, we are a mess. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> when you really sit back to think about a lot of things, a lot of mess happened in most of our heads. I talked about resent. Another thing that a child can do when negative discipline is involved is they will retreat. A child will become timid. The child will not be able to interact with anybody. A child will never be able to be bold enough to say anything. Nothing. A parent shared with me in our last coaching session. We, we do, I run a quarterly um, online coaching session, you know, on becoming the emotionally intelligent parent. And most of the things that, you know, we do in that place to be able to actually bring out the prejudices, bring out the things, how we're raised, and begin to break them down and treat them one after the other. And, you know, she was telling me how she retreated and that, that she was, that her virginity was taken right in her home. She was raped right in her home, but that her mom heard and still beat her and said it was her fault. So I don't know how that is discipline, really. <laughs> the discipline that works is not violent, parents. The discipline that works does not kill a child's self-esteem. The discipline that works is the discipline that actually we bring a child to take responsibility. Are you teaching your child to take responsibility or are you just commanding and saying, I just want you to obey me blindly? Blind obedience is wrong. That's not discipline, parents. Sometimes we're going somewhere, the children would tell me, I would tell them, oh, no, do this. Thing. Like today, we're in the market. I was in the market with the kids and I, I told my son, I said, don't go that way. A car was coming. He said, no, mom. And he kept quiet. He stayed there. And then when the car finished, he said, he now said to me, he said, mom, a car was actually coming when you said you should go that way. Blind obedience tells your child to just do whatever you say. That's not obedience. That's not discipline. That's not raising a child. If you must raise a child, if you must use the discipline that works, you must begin to think, am I raising children to take responsibility? Or am I raising them to just take on blind obedience i'm sure that we are you know getting to the point where <laughs> this whole class is winding up if there are questions that i need to attend to i will attend to them if you need to understand more about parenting more about connection sorry about discipline that works i would advise that you get a copy of connect to correct not because i'm just the author but because i have seen that book change the narrative of parenting among the parents who have actually held it i am not i don't teach permissiveness what parents say what some people say is don't discipline just leave children to do no way if you know me very well i have a lot of family family that is kid in here i have a lot of friends that are kidding here my home is very i'm very firm when it comes to doing things and consequences yes children love to come to my home my friends are here. Their kids still love to, they love to come to my home. There are boundaries in my house. There are consequences for doing things that are wrong. Yet, they want to come. See, children love boundaries. But you must put boundaries with love, with being firm, with being, you know, with, 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 with being um, um, fair in those your boundaries. So, I would advise every parent to get a copy of Connect to Correct. You can, you can go see. There's a free chapter on my website, www.wendiologe.com. You will see a free chapter on my website. Chapter one is free. You can read it and just, you know, um, get exactly what is inside. And then, um, you know, get a copy for yourself. We have pickup points in most of the major cities in the country. We have e-books of it. And, um, you know, every 
every um, um, city, almost every city, we're actually working to have it in every city. Almost every has actually have a pickup point, and then um, you you will be able to actually get a copy. It costs three thousand naira. You know, you know. Today, my pastor said, if they tell you to buy gold, you buy all the gold and keep in the box. They say buy a book that will change, <laughs> change you, and change you know the way you think and change the things that you do and make you better. You say, oh, it's too expensive. I tell you, the way I buy parenting books, even me, I, I don't know it all. I learn every day. There are a lot of coaches I've been able to bring together here. I, I am a follower of most of them. All of them. I, I follow them. I follow their posts. I follow, I follow everything that they do. Success, I will, I, I will reach you on how to get a copy of Connect to Correct. Connect to Correct is, 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 is an awesome book. One of the things that, you know, is very relevant about Connect to Correct is that I was able to actually bring out you know, real, real life experiences to begin to show you. And what I'm doing with the discipline that works, which is going to be launched in September, is that I'm also putting together strategies because I've realized that people are saying, okay, yes, I've worked on my emotions, but I don't know what else to do. So when you work on your emotions, there are tools, there are rules, and I'm going to be putting, in fact, what I, what I start today is actually an excerpt from what it is that is in my book, in my upcoming book. So if you would like to have a copy of my book, reach, reach out to me. Um, and then if you also want to connect to every other um, coach that have, uh, have spoken at the conference, you can also reach out to me, also connect on our YouTube channel. I've had barrage of messages telling me that, oh, I really want to watch the conference. So we, we've agreed that we're going to leave the conference for about a week before we pull them down from our YouTube page. The, the, the conference comes to an end today and now with this class I, I still haven't seen any question is there any question i haven't seen any question yes connect to correct connect to correct put boundaries with love put boundaries with love and fairness yes um i've already um, but i can't see any question the discipline that works is not violent or killing a child's self-esteem yes the discipline that works is actually a lot um better so um if there are no questions, I can't see any questions popping up. I'm going to wait for a while while I speak about the conference and the people that came on the conference. I want to really appreciate all the coaches who spoke on this conference. Last year, the conference had Z.O.B., had Tai Yotim, and had um, um, Tai Wakin Lamy. It was awesome. It was interesting. And then myself, you know. But this year, we decided to expand. Z.O.B., I see you. Thank you so much for all you do, man. And, uh, you know, it, it, um, it's um, going to put up, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of, um, I decided that we're going to put up a lot of um, things when it comes to raising children. So that we're not just, it's not a one way, it's not a, 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 a straight, it's not a straight thing. There are too many things to learn. So we, we brought together all these um, people so that you will be able to connect with them and also learn a great deal with them. I can assure you. Every single person who spoke on this conference had have their onions together. They knew, as in they 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 understand their craft. Trust me, I'm not. It's not um, um something. It's not. I'm not coming, you know, um to just praise people. So De Caro. In fact, most of them I connected with them online. Um Terry McQueen, um Corina. I've met <laughs> a lot of friends I haven't even seen. But that's what the world, the changing world, you know, is today. The world has changed. The world is continued to change, and that we must continue also to, you know, key into the changing world. All right. So, and um, I also want to thank every single intentional parent. You know, somebody chatted me and said, "Oh, I like your tribe." They were so active, you know, on this um, um, conference. I really like the way they were participating and all that. There's a hunger in this place that I like. People are willing to learn. The only way is for us to learn. Enlightenment is the only way. We can't do this without knowledge. We need to know. We need to know to actually parent better. That's why the team of the, of the um, conference read Parenting for a Better Future. We're parenting for a better future. The future that we don't even understand. We don't even know. But we're, you know, we're saying, why not do it better so that we'll be able to actually parent for a better, um, um, a better future. I want to thank every single one of the speakers and every single one of the intentional parents. All of you are awesome. You know, people were, you know, I've had barrage of messages coming to say, oh, ma'am, thank you so much. Oh, honestly, you guys got me here. You guys, you know, gave me the zeal to be able to push 
and push and push until we are here. I want to say thank you for your support and for the team. <laughs> I had a back end team from this intentional parent who came in, you know, to come and work with me to bring this to you. I want to say thank you to every one of them. I can see some questions. How do teachers discipline without damaging? First of all, one of the things that I say is that there is supportive discipline. There is discipline, you know, um, I think Benjamin, my friend, will, will call it supportive discipline. There is a discipline that works. But before you actually do that, what it means is that you need to begin to teach your teachers emotional intelligence. You need to be emotions coaching. A lot of teachers do not know how to handle their emotions. It's a big challenge. Trust me. Just like parents, teachers also have the same problem. So they, they do these things, they say things to the children that are not necessary to be said to the children. And it happens all the time. All right. So your teachers actually need to work on their emotions. That's one thing that is key before we now begin to teach them the strategies. If you teach the strategies without working on emotions, it will fail. Quote me. That's what I said. Somebody said, does these tools um, for uh, apply um, to toddlers. Yes, actually, when you start setting boundaries, you start setting boundaries, you know, even from that time. But of course, in a different way. The way you set boundaries for children that are preteens, that is not the same. It's not the same way we set boundaries for you know other grown children. Adangosi, thank you so much. Um, um, I can see. Um, I can see my cousins. <laughs> I can see you. I see friends, family. My cousins. I have a lot of cousins here. <laughs> who are already um, had so much support. I really appreciate every one of you. Um, I thank you, ma'am. Lord Lonze. Thank you, ma. Um, I thank you, Jide. Um, thank you, Kelechi. You enjoyed the session. Don't forget to thank us, future parents. Oh, Chinedu, I thank you. Honestly, there are a lot of people that follow me who are not even parents. In fact, I, I found one young girl who bought a lot of my books and was just distributing to people. I was wondering. She said, no, ma. You don't understand. This thing you're teaching is the errors that my parents, you know, have made in the past. Somebody said, please, I don't know if this has been answered already, but I, you should throw more, um, please, I, saying I should throw away my cane. <laughs> Success, eh? Like I said from the beginning of this session, I said that the things I will say here might not be uh, the things that you want to hear. You know, the kind of things that uh, uh, you just say, I don't use cane, you don't need to. If you are able to work on your emotions, you really do not need to. I, I will not, um, time will not permit me to actually begin to go into all that and all that and all that. All right. So, Nick Alba, thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you. Um, ZOB, thank you. Thank you. ZOB is a, is a, um, is a homeschooling mama. You guys, anybody that wants to do homeschooling, in fact, I envy her most of the times. So I'm like, I wish I can really do this. Anybody that is interested in homeschooling, please contact GOB and come and thank me later. Really. Thank you, Etima. Thank you. You posted a question earlier, Etima. I didn't see your question. Sorry. 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 I didn't see your question. Um, I'm trying to go back up to see if I can see your question. Um, is in there? I think I've answered yours. I think I have answered your success. I've answered you. I've put Etima, please. Can you resend your question if uh, if I can't um, I can't see that question anywhere? I really cannot see that question anywhere. Okay, so by by the you know, all right, yes, all right, I can't, I can't see all that, all right, thank you so much, Z, thank you, thank you so much, everybody, thank you, thank you, and thank you, and like I said, as a way to recap, just remember that authority is respect and trust, is not power and control, anytime your child does not have trust and cannot confide in you, it means you have lost authority and control, and you have lost authority totally, so you must always see that. And then I also said that there are effects of negative discipline. You must rem remember the four hours of negative discipline. Rebellion, revenge, resentment, and retreat. All right? So thank you, everyone. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you again. I won't forget to mention the governor. And my husband is here. He said he's still learning, coach. Thank you, sir. I don't want to even say a lot on the conference about my husband. 
Um, in fact, the fact that I'm here and I'm able to do this is credit to the governor. Trust me. I'm a very anyhow scattered person. <laughs> I just have somebody who puts me together and then you just see me in the world. So I want to just say thank you to, to my family, my children, you know, have that they've been have been lost for the past one week. The children have just taken it. They've just said, Mom, is it your class again? Oh, you the conference, you you know you are the host, you need to be there. The children understood. In fact, my foster daughter have had had us, you know, if I wanted to go running two days ago, time was choking, we couldn't go running again, and we had to, you know, keep doing this. And I want to say thank you to everyone. If Naya, I at the kids, I want to say thank you to everyone who made this a success. I am grateful and grateful again. Let's continue being the intentional parent. If there are questions again on the um, comment section, I will respond to them, but that will be tomorrow, please. I need to catch some rest. <laughs> so thank you, everybody who's been here. I'm excited. I feel like staying here, but hey, I can't stay here. <laughs> I need to go. I need to go family calls. I need to actually go that go do that running with my daughter right now. And I'm sure that um, she probably will be waiting. You know, everybody have missed out in that. Let's continue keeping the fire on the on the um, on the group. Let's continue bringing up the learning points. And then, please, if I didn't respond to your post and all the posts that were you know made during this one week, forgive us. It was because of the conference. We will approve every post by tomorrow. And and of course, let's get the the whole system bubbling again we'll continue our normal routine a few things will change in the group and we're going to also be sharing that with you in time thank you everybody thank you so much and i will not forget i want to thank god for you know the strength the opportunity the 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 belief that you know the faith that everyone has been able to actually um, put in me on doing this even people who do not know me from anywhere you have trusted me so far you have been able to put, you know, a, a lot of, you know, your journey. You, I, I say that you, you invited me to your home to walk you through the parenting journey. I am grateful. I do not take any of them for granted. I'm going to share a number that you can reach me with, you know, or WhatsApp me or whatever question that you will have. Thank you. We thank God for everything that He has done. Thank you so much, everyone. Lots of kisses and hugs. I thank you. Good night, Intentional Parent. See you on the group.